This year, our message is about being caught in the middle. Many times we find ourselves lost, stuck, or torn between two things. Maybe you're struggling between school and work, friends and family, addiction and recovery, even financial struggles. We all go through this at some point, and it's different for each one of us. But the really brilliant thing about all of this is that we have a choice. We can A, stick with our own plan, which usually sounds pretty great in our heads but doesn't work out too well, or we can give in to God and say, here, Lord, I surrender. I will follow the plan you have for me. I don't need anything but you. We hope that when you leave this morning, you will no longer be caught in the middle and you will turn to the Holy One. charades and the objects of the game is to have to communicate without using your voice but God gives us a voice and it's still not easy to communicate Mark 16 15 says go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation sometimes it's not the words but the actions preach the gospel in all aspects of your life and if you have to use words just make it clear How will they know unless I tell them? How will they ever understand? 
seems we have a language barrier, Tower of Babel all over again. I'm speaking French, they're hearing Spanish, so tell me, Lord, how will they comprehend? You've heard the expression, think before you speak, hundreds of times, and you've probably just shrugged it off. Just like that other insightful phrase, your face will freeze like that if you're not careful. Unlike facial expressions, our words do stick around, which means everything we say comes with a lot of power. The question is, are we ready to use that power to make a real difference? Words kill, words give life. They're either the poison or the fruit. You choose.
Revelation 3, 16 through 18 says, I know you inside and out and find little to my liking. You're not hot. You're not cold. Far better to be hot or cold. You're stale. You're stagnant. You make me want to vomit. You brag, I'm rich. I got it made. I need nothing from anybody. Oblivious to the fact that you are a pitiful, blind beggar, threadbare and homeless. Here's what I want you to do. Buy your gold from me. Gold made in the refiner's fire, then you'll be truly rich. Buy your clothes from me, clothes designed in heaven. You've gone around half naked long enough. Buy med and, and buy medicine for your eyes from me, so you can see, really see. Somewhere between the hot and the cold. Between the new and the old, somewhere between who I am and who I used to be, somewhere in the middle, you'll find me. Somewhere between the wrong and the right, somewhere between the darkness and light. Somewhere between who I was and who you're making me. Somewhere in the middle you'll find me. Just how close can I get, Lord, to my surrender? Oh, 
Ephesians 2.5 says that even when we were dead in our sins, it is by God's grace that we are saved. It's so easy to get caught up in the distractions of this life that pull us away from God. Whether it's as simple as a tough day at work, long day at school, or a lot of homework, or it can be as big as an addiction or a certain sin that causes us to slowly fade in our relationship with Jesus. So what is it that God asks of us of these things? I believe that God asks us to lay down all of our effort and all of our trying and all of our strength in saying, I trust in Jesus. I trust in his perfection. I trust in his power. I trust in his resurrection because he's the only one that can get me through this and he's the only one that can make me free. ties your hands this darkness pulls the strings be careful little feet where you go for it's a little feet behind you that are sure to follow it's a slow thing when you give yourself away it's a slow Choices are made, a price will be paid. 
Be careful, little eyes, what you see. For the Father up above is looking down in love. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Careless, I am reckless. I'm a wrong way traveling, slowly unraveling, shell of a man. Burnt out, I'm so numb now that the fire's just an ember way down in the corner of my cold, cold heart. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Two words describe faith, sure and certain. These two qualities need a secure beginning and end point. 
The beginning point is believing in God's character, that he is who he says. The end point is believing in God's promises, that he will do what he says. When we believe that God will fulfill his promises, even though we don't see those promises materializing yet, we demonstrate true faith. Everybody falls sometimes. You gotta find the strength to rise from the ashes. Find a new beginning. Anyone can feel the ache. You think it's more than you can take, but you're stronger, stronger than you know. Don't you give up now? not a word, just a reason for someone not to try. Everybody's scared to death to go out and take that step out on the water, but it'll be all right. There's so much Matthew chapter 24 says, Concerning the day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, except the Father. He is about to break into the open with his rule, so proclaim the message with intensity. Keep on your watch, challenge, warn, and urge your people. Don't ever quit. Just keep it simple.
Voices in the 